I'd like to talk a bit about the technology here because it seems like um, with AI for video, you need vast amounts of compute, you need vast amounts of storage. The infrastructure is kind of a challenge. Can you talk me through what's involved here? Most of the storage architectures, you tend to end up with two big buckets. Um, you end up with one bucket, which is all your data. And what's and those buckets are getting a lot bigger because people are figuring out those who kept every byte of their data have a big advantage over those who threw theirs out. And there's a lot of companies that said, hey, if data is over five years old, seven years old, 10 years old, over a certain age, we throw it out. And there's certain companies that said, ah, let's just, let's keep it all just in case. And those who kept it all just have an advantage because anybody can analyze data on the internet and you're on an equal footing with everyone else. You, you, like, you can't have competitive advantage because you analyze the internet data really any differently. But if you have a huge stockpile of, say, every single shopping experience that ever happened in one of your stores, ever, for the last 40 years, and you can see where people frowned in your store, where people walked out angry, where people were delighted, if, if you have that data, it's like incredibly valuable. So I tie that to the first part of the architecture, which is a huge data, a data lake, or just an archive where you keep your entire data archives, your library of everything that ever happened. And like any good library, if you can't find something in the library, it's no good. So it's a library with a really wonderful catalog to be able to search that data, dice that data, prepare that data. A lot of people call that the core of data science, which is organizing, preparing, cataloging your data. So you can move it to the second bucket, which is a crazy fast bucket, like the most expensive for the highest speed. And that's where you find insight. Right, you might say, "I want to see every single kick of a, of a soccer ball that's ever been made, ever been recorded, and I want to determine the characteristics that determine an accurate and powerful kick." And I'm going to look at millions of kicks. But first of all, you need to have all those kicks, and then study them. Or, and you could think of hundreds of scenarios where you go and study what makes this person run faster, what makes this person throw further. Um, what makes this business technique outperform that business technique? But so you have your, but you got to be able to get the data out. If you can't find any kicks, you can only find 50% of the kicks, you, you're not going to come to the right conclusion. So you have this giant data lake where you prepare data, then you move it to this raging fast area where it's raging fast storage. And the main reason you need raising, raging fast storage is so you can use that very fast compute you bought. A lot of people buy, buying fast servers isn't hard. Filling them with GPUs isn't hard. The issue is saturating them is hard. Giving them enough data that what you paid for is running at 100%, that is hard. Usually that really expensive compute infrastructure is waiting on data. And so you're like paid for something you're not really saturating or using. And it's very hard to create a data lake that can move data quickly and efficiently to the fast area. The fast area can provide that data at, at it literally to saturate every bit of compute you have so that the money you spent on all that is being used optimally. Um, that that's kind of what everyone's wrestling with. And usually what they're finding is they bought these giant compute infrastructures that are idle, waiting on data to be prepared, organized, fed to it, uh, so it can do its thing. As I understand it, then the structure is you've got like loads of just raw data that's going into your data lake, maybe a bit slower. And then once you've processed that, cleaned it up, so it's ready, that should be put in the fast compute. And it seems like the storage then, that's the kicker, like getting fast storage, so you can throw the data at, it, at the computer, at the CPU fast enough, that's, that's going to be the key. Well, I mean, there's a lot of economics involved because, you know, the reason why people throw data out is it's super expensive to keep data for 100 years. I mean, if you look at what an Amazon bill would be to say, hey, can I park Star Wars up there for 600 years? 
the monthly bill. Like it, it's just like it doesn't make any sense. So companies are now saying, if I'm going to keep data for 50 years, 100 years, I need a real strategy to build an archive that's economic, that's safe, and uh, like I need cataloging techniques to understand that. You know, I, and I think people are thinking, oh, I just throw it up in the cloud, and then everyone kind of sobered up and said. Paying a monthly bill for something you're going to keep for centuries is never going to make sense. And then paying additional fees to ever look at it and analyze it. So if you're analyzing data, taking it, studying it, putting it back, taking it, putting it back, I mean, the bill becomes kind of outrageous. And it just ends up being the wrong architecture, you know, for like 100 year archives, 200 year archives. Like, you know, groups like the Library of Congress with their business or groups like big movie studios, they build archives because they know that's like, that's their business. And now I think a lot of people are turning around saying archiving all of our corporate data is our strategic advantage. It's a very core of strategic advantage. And they're thinking about that data lake very differently. 